we care a lot about news and how information flows. So how does a story go from a blog to a mainstream newspaper to television? Um, we look at that question and we try to study, study it quantitatively. So we don't just look at the story of what someone thinks is happening. We say, all right, how can we actually measure this? How can we go out and get all the mentions of some story that happened in the last month? How can we combine that with all of the mentions on social media? How can we combine that with what people are saying in the blogs? When you put all that together, you can start to get a sense of how information moves. And we call that the media ecosystem. So how does information move through that network of media sources? And we think that matters because what stories get told really matter. They shape our perceptions and they shape how we understand the world. So recently we decided to dig into this investigation to try to understand what happened with the Trayvon Martin story in the US. So this was a case in the United States where there was a young African-American male who was shot in Florida, which is one of the states in the, in the United States. And the, this happens every day, unfortunately. This is a normal occurrence that someone's shot by someone else and dies. Now, this, got, this story somehow got to the point where President Obama was talking about how if he had a son, he would look like Trayvon Martin. So how did that happen? How did a story go from a local a story to the national level? So we wanted to understand that because people were saying, hey, this is one of the first great digital online grassroots stories we have. The bloggers and the change.org petition, all of this stuff bubbled it up to the, app, to the national media attention. Now, we said, okay, we need to dig into that. That's great. That would be awesome if it's true. How can we figure out if this is actually accurate or not? Do we have enough data? Can we collect enough information that we can actually make a statement about the accuracy of whether this was a grassroots movement that brought this one story up to the national setting. So what did we do? We grabbed as much data as we could. We looked at the Media Cloud Project from the Berkman Center. Uh, we looked at the closed captions uh, from TV news reports that archive.org has. We were able to get the times of all the signatures from the change.org people. We were able to look at Google searches over time. We just opened it up and grabbed everything we could and then we just plotted it all. And when we sort of looked at this, uh, the principal research uh, scientist in our, in our group, Ethan Zuckerman said, how do we dig into this? How can we keep on adding layers to this? So another layer is to understand the qualitative sort of experience of what was happening. When was the press conference? Uh, what are the words being used? What's the framing around the story? So we started to see that there was a pattern that in fact, when we found out about who the network of actors were, it turned out that it was a, it was a very well orchestrated press campaign that led to that national attention. And certainly there was bubbling and rumbling in the, in the grassroots media, but the thing that really made it took off, take off was a well orchestrated press campaign by the team that was working with the family. And that's sort of an old media story. Now what's interesting is that we believe that from our analysis that it stayed in the media longer because of the grassroots support for the story. But some of it was controversial. Some of it was reframing. So once something got really popular in the US, we have the left and the right who wanted their own understanding and way of telling this story of this, this boy being shot. So in this example, a lot of the left was saying, hey, this is about gun laws. This is about other issues that we care about that we want to mobilize on. On the right, people were saying, hey, this kid wasn't really a saint. He was a drug dealer. They were pulling anything they can. And I'm not saying any of that stuff is true, but they were pulling all these threads. And we can analytically see the story changing by looking at the words they're using in telling the story. So we did that analysis and over time, we're able to create this narrative of how the story progressed. And we believe that's helping us understand how other stories can move through media. And in this particular example, have a deeper understanding and a deeper conversation about what exactly happened from a media analysis point of view and what might happen next time. And if you're an activist, how can you actually game the system? What's the right way to do it?